Hello and welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. Today we'll talk about the four phases of clinical trials. Welcome to the GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. If you've ever taken a prescription drug, received a vaccine, or undergone a medical treatment, you might not have thought about the rigorous testing process that each of these therapies had to go through before reaching you. Today, we are taking a deep dive into the process that ensures medical treatments are both safe and effective, the four phases of clinical trials. Clinical trials are one of the most important aspects of medical research. They are the reason we have life-saving medications, advanced treatment options, and preventive therapies for diseases that were once untreatable. But drug development is no simple task. It is an extensive, multi-step process that takes years, sometimes decades, to complete. At the heart of this process are four critical phases, each designed to systematically test a drug's safety, effectiveness, and potential risks. Every phase builds upon the last, gradually expanding in scale and complexity. Today, we'll discuss what happens in each phase, why they are necessary, and what they mean for patients, researchers, and the future of medicine. We'll also explore the often overlooked post-marketing surveillance phase, which ensures that even after a drug is approved, its effects continue to be monitored in the real world. If you're interested in how modern medicine develops, how scientists ensure safety, and why new treatments take years to be approved, this video is for you. Let's start with the foundation, what exactly are clinical trials and why do they matter? A clinical trial is a structured scientific study conducted in human participants to evaluate new medical treatments, devices, or interventions. These treatments can include newly developed drugs, vaccines, surgical techniques, or even behavioral therapies aimed at improving health outcomes. The main goal of clinical trials is to ensure that these interventions are both safe and effective before they are made available to the public. Before a drug ever reaches human testing, it undergoes extensive preclinical research in laboratories, where it is studied in cell cultures and animal models to identify its biological effects, toxicity levels, and potential risks. However, animal testing does not always predict how a drug will behave in humans. That's why human clinical trials are essential. Every country has a regulatory agency overseeing clinical trials to ensure safety and ethical conduct. In the United States, this is the Food and Drug Administration, FDA. While in Europe, it is the European Medicines Agency, EMA. These agencies enforce strict guidelines to protect trial participants and ensure the quality of the research. Clinical trials follow a step-by-step -step process, progressing through four phases that gradually increase in complexity. Each phase has a specific goal, from testing basic safety to confirming effectiveness in large populations. Let's start at the very beginning with phase one trials. The first phase of a clinical trial, often referred to as a first-in-human trial, marks the critical transition from preclinical research to human testing. Before this stage, the drug has only been studied in preclinical settings, using animal models and computer simulations. The overarching goal of a phase one trial is to rigorously assess the treatment's safety in humans. While understanding how the drug interacts with the body is crucial, determining whether the drug is effective is not the focus of this phase. These studies are typically small, involving tens to around 100 participants. The choice of participants depends on the drug and its intended use. While healthy volunteers are sometimes used, particularly for drugs with minimal anticipated toxicity, many phase one trials enroll patients who have the condition the drug is designed to treat. This is especially common for serious illnesses like cancer, but also for other conditions like high blood pressure or diabetes. The primary objective of phase one is to evaluate the drug's safety, determine a safe and tolerable dosage range, and identify potential side effects. Researchers meticulously study the drug's pharmacokinetics, how the body absorbs, metabolizes, and excretes the drug, and pharmacodynamics, how the drug interacts with the body at a molecular level. Importantly, these pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic studies are designed not only to understand these processes, but also to connect them to safety and potential efficacy. For instance, Understanding drug metabolism can help predict which individuals might be more prone to side effects. During this phase, participants are closely monitored, 
often in a dedicated clinical research unit or hospital setting. Researchers use a carefully planned dose escalation scheme, starting with a very low dose and gradually increasing it in different groups of participants. This allows them to determine the maximum tolerated dose or the recommended phase two dose, the highest dose that can be administered safely without unacceptable side effects. Any adverse reactions, no matter how small, are meticulously documented. If the drug proves too toxic at any point, its development will be halted. While it's estimated that a significant proportion, up to 70% of drugs advanced beyond phase one, the exact percentage varies and should not be considered a fixed statistic. Once a drug has demonstrated an acceptable safety profile in phase one, it progresses to phase two. This phase focuses on evaluating the treatment's effectiveness in patients who have the condition the drug is designed to treat. A key objective in phase two is to determine if the drug has a meaningful impact on the disease. Equally important is the refinement of the optimal dose, the dose that maximizes therapeutic benefit while minimizing side effects. It's not simply about if the drug works, but how well it works at different doses. Phase two trials typically involve 100 to 300 patients. These trials often utilize control groups. While placebo controls are sometimes used, especially when no standard treatment exists, active controls, already approved treatments, are also frequently employed, particularly when a placebo would be unethical. The choice of control depends on the specific disease, ethical considerations, and the availability of existing therapies. Many phase two trials also incorporate blinding, where either the patient, the investigator, or both are unaware of who is receiving the drug or the control. This helps minimize bias. Phase two trials are diverse in their design and may focus on different aspects of drug evaluation. Some trials concentrate on dose ranging, while others prioritize preliminary efficacy assessment. Researchers also work to identify and refine the most appropriate endpoints for subsequent phase three trials, the specific measurements used to assess the drug's effect. Phase two trials can last from several months to two years, allowing researchers to gather sufficient data on short-term effects and refine the study design for phase three. A significant proportion of drugs do not successfully complete phase two, either due to lack of demonstrated benefit or unacceptable safety concerns. While it's estimated that roughly a third of drugs move forward to phase three, this is a general indication of the challenges in drug development and the actual success rate can vary considerably. Phase three is the largest and most expensive stage of drug development. By this point, the treatment has shown promising results in earlier phases, but before it can be approved, its efficacy and safety must be definitively established in larger, more diverse patient populations. These trials typically involve hundreds to thousands of participants at multiple study sites, often spanning different hospitals and even countries including diverse populations, varying in age, gender, ethnicity, and health conditions, is crucial to ensure the drug's effectiveness and safety across a broad spectrum of individuals, and to identify potential differences in how people respond to the treatment. The primary goal of phase three is to rigorously evaluate the treatment's effectiveness in a broader clinical setting while continuing to closely monitor its safety profile. These trials can last from one to four years or even longer, gathering comprehensive data on efficacy, short-term and long-term side effects, and potential interactions with other medications. To minimize bias and ensure the validity of results, most phase three studies utilize randomized controlled trials. Patients are randomly assigned to receive either the new drug and existing treatment, active control, or a placebo, if ethically permissible. Double blinding, where neither the patient nor the investigator knows who is receiving which treatment, is the preferred approach. However, when blinding is not feasible, other strategies are employed to minimize bias. If a treatment demonstrates statistically significant benefits with an acceptable safety profile, the drug company submits a new drug application, NDA, to the FDA in the United States or a marketing authorization application, MAA, to the EMA in Europe. Regulatory agencies rigorously review all submitted data, including efficacy, safety, manufacturing processes, and quality control. If approved, the drug is authorized for marketing and public use. It's important to note that drug development continues even after approval. Phase four, or post-marketing surveillance, 
involves ongoing monitoring of the drug's safety and effectiveness in real-world clinical practice after it becomes available on the market. This crucial phase can help identify rare or long-term adverse events that may not have been apparent during the pre-approval trials. Phase four, also known as post-marketing surveillance, is a critical, often overlooked stage of drug development. Once a drug is approved and reaches the market, it is no longer being used in the controlled environment of clinical trials. Instead, it is now being used by potentially millions of people in real-world clinical practice. This massive increase in exposure can reveal rare adverse drug reactions that were not detected in the earlier, smaller trials, simply due to the greater number of people taking the medication. Regulatory agencies continuously monitor the drug's safety through various mechanisms, including spontaneous reporting systems, where healthcare professionals, patients, pharmacists, and others can report suspected adverse drug reactions. This real-world data collection is essential for identifying potential safety signals. Additional research is often conducted during phase four to further evaluate the drug's safety and effectiveness in diverse populations, such as pregnant women, children, elderly patients, or patients with specific comorbidities. These studies can include observational studies, registries, pharmacoepidemiology studies, and in some cases, additional clinical trials. For example, registries can track long-term outcomes in patients taking the drug, while observational studies can examine how the drug is being used in real-world practice. If serious safety concerns arise, regulatory agencies can take a range of actions to protect public health. These actions may include issuing warnings to healthcare providers and patients, requiring updates to the drug's labeling to include new warnings or precautions, restricting the use of the drug to certain patient populations, requiring additional studies to further evaluate the drug's safety, or in the most serious cases, recalling the drug from the market. A well-known example of the importance of phase four surveillance is Vioxx, a painkiller that was withdrawn from the market after post-marketing surveillance revealed an increased risk of heart attacks. From early safety studies in phase one to large-scale efficacy trials in phase three and ongoing monitoring in phase four, every step of the clinical trial process ensures that new medical treatments are as safe and effective as possible. In the end, it is always about clinical research benefiting patients. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content on clinical research. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment.